What's up everyone, this is Danny from Plug and Play and today we're going to be going over our new extremely powerful easing tool, Curves. Curves provides motion designers with a plethora of easing functions to enhance their animation workflows. We packaged up easing, bounce, elastic, and distribution all into one easy to use panel that aims to be the last easing tool you will ever need. Curves is a part of our new After Effects tool platform, Plug and Play. Subscribe and get access to our growing catalog of After Effects tools, motion graphics assets, and general resources. We are adding more every month and trying to build just like a one-stop shop for all of your After Effects tool needs. Believe me, we're just getting started. With that being said, let's dive right in. Getting started with curves is easy. Once you've installed the tool and opened it up, you're presented with this large Bezier curve, very similar to the After Effects graph editor. So let's go ahead, select some keyframes here, and just hit apply. Just like that, Curves will automatically add the easing to our selected keyframes. Super simple. And of course we can dial in this animation. So maybe I want an ease in curve here to begin with. Go ahead, adjust, hit apply. And in the middle, let's do an easy ease. So we can go ahead, adjust, hit apply. And then on the last keyframe set, we'll do an ease out. So go ahead, adjust, hit apply. And just like that, We've got a pretty nice animation here, just in a few clicks, super easy to do with curves. Now, before we get ahead of ourselves, let's go over the curves user interface. At the top of the panel, you'll see four different buttons to switch between the four different modes of curves. We have easing mode, distribution mode, bounce mode, and elastic mode. But let's go back to easing mode. We'll cover the four different modes here later in the video. Great, so to the right of that, we have buttons for adding a preset and for accessing the settings panel. And of course, we've already covered the large Bezier interface here, but if you're dragging around these handles and you want to snap them to the vertical lines, you can hold shift and this will snap it to the closest vertical line in the user interface. Also, if you want to snap to the horizontal lines, you can just hold control or command to easily snap between all of these different lines here. Below that, we have this preview bar animation. And so this will play every time that you adjust your curve in the interface. It just gives you an idea of what the animation is going to look like before you go ahead and apply it. It can save you a bunch of time. Below that, we have these different buttons here, depending on which mode we are in. So in easing and distribution mode, we have these hover sliders here that allow us to control the handle position just from a slider here. And this is super useful if you want to make like an overshoot without having to drag all the way up here you can just use this slider. And in addition, if you want to affect both of these handles position at the same time, you can hold down shift and it will move them together. Now, one more thing regarding the slider inputs. So if you hover over them and then go to this actual value, you can click inside of here and edit this value directly. So you can get some very fine grain control here, get exactly what you're looking for super easy. To the right of that, we have this read button. If we go ahead and select a keyframe set from our timeline and then go ahead and click the read button, it's going to read it into our user interface here. This can be super useful if you're trying to like copy eases between two different sets of animations. Great. To the right of that, we have this preset bar toggle. And when you click on this, it's going to reveal all of the different presets. Right now, we have a bunch of different presets in here that we ship with, but we'll go over that here more in a little bit. And of course, to the right of that, we also have the apply button. Now you can also go to the main graph here and right click, and it's going to reveal this menu where you can enter in values in cubic Bezier notation. It's super easy to go in here, edit the curve and just hit apply. And then that will update the curve in the interface. Now below that, we also have a button to clear the keyframe easing. So if we click on this, it's going to get rid of the easing inside of our timeline and also reset the curve to be linear. Curves aims to be as responsive as possible so that you can dock it wherever you want in your After Effects panel. You'll notice that as soon as you start resizing the curves panel, the grid lines will update, the buttons will change into icons to be more compact, and the scroll bars will appear that will allow you to still access all of the features of curves even when it's in a very minimized view. When moving from easing mode to distribution mode, you'll notice that the UI stays fairly similar with a few new buttons being added. But unlike easing mode, distribution mode allows you to distribute all of your selected keyframes or layers across your timeline following the Bezier curve that we set up in the interface. So let's go ahead. I've got all of these different keyframes selected here. I'm going to make some edits to my graph real quick. And then let's just go ahead and hit apply. 
So right off the bat, curves will distribute all of these keyframes along our timeline following that Bezier curve that we set up in the interface. Super fun, super easy to do. And this is like really useful if you have a bunch of different keyframes or layers that you want to sequentially bring on. So imagine like a text layer with a bunch of different text characters that you want to animate on, or maybe a bunch of different objects are building in your scene and you want to easily offset those and give it some type of flair, give it some type of sequential easing when you're offsetting all of those different keyframes. This tool makes it super simple to do that. These keyframes are distributed over the course of 23 frames, and that's being dictated by this button down here. So we can take away frames from this distribution or add frames. If we hold shift, it will increment in units of 10. And yeah, so maybe we don't want to have them distributed over 23 frames. We can go ahead, undo, set up our 10 frames here, and then just hit apply. Great or maybe we don't want to have this distribution. Maybe we want to flip the curve and have the distribution start from the top layer. Great, super simple, really easy to do. And this works on layers as well. So you don't just have to use it on keyframes. Select a bunch of layers, hit apply. Now they're all distributed. You can go ahead and just make whatever curve you really want. Maybe we want something like this and we can select all of our keyframes again hit apply, and you can see just how like fun it is to offset these different layers following this curve. It's like the second dimension of easing in After Effects. So really fun, really useful, and also you still get access to all of your favorite presets with the preset bar down here. Bounce mode and curves is the easiest way to create bounce animations inside of After Effects. So let's jump right in. I'm gonna go ahead and select these two keyframe sets, and then let's just hit apply with the default parameters here. So right off the bat, Curves is going to generate these new keyframes in our timeline in order to create this beautiful bounce animation. Super simple, super predictable. That's one of the big things about this tool is that it is a very predictable way of making bounce animations. We do that by reading in the duration of the keyframe sets and then also the values of them. What you see in the interface here is what you get in the graph editor. It's a one-to-one -one result. Awesome. Let's undo that and let's talk about some of the various parameters inside of the bounce mode. Bounciness provides us a way to control the overall bounciness of the animation. If we turn this down, we're going to get a much more of a dead bounce here. So I'm going to go ahead and select our keyframe sets again, hit apply. And as you can see, these balls are kind of coming to an end of their animation super quickly. Looks like they're not that bouncy, maybe super heavy, kind of more indicative of the bowling ball here. Let's actually crank this way up real quick too. Hit apply. And as you can see, we're getting a much bouncier scene here. Super fun, super easy to do, super easy to iterate on. You're not going to get the perfect bounce animation on first click, but you can super quickly go through a bunch of different iterations and figure out exactly what you're looking for. Cool. Go ahead, undo that, and let's go to amplitude. Amplitude controls the actual height that these bounces reach. If we increase this amplitude, we're going to get a much higher bounce on these balls when they hit the floor. Hit play here, and as you can see, they're bouncing much higher. Gravity is a way to control duration between these bounces. So if I go ahead and increase this slider here, it's going to decrease the amount of time that happens throughout the animation because we have more gravity. So go ahead, undo this animation, hit apply, and as you can see, the animation ends much quicker. Crank down gravity, and now we have a much more of a floaty type of animation here. It looks like it's almost happening on the moon or something. Cool. The KY is a way to incrementally decrease the amplitude across every single bounce. Decrease the DKY it is going to increase the height of these various bounces. Now, if we increase the KY, it is going to decrease the amount of amplitude for every incremental bounce here. I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply here, see what this looks like. Cool. Decay X is going to incrementally decrease the amount of time between every single bounce. So if we increase the Decay X, it is going to decrease the amount of time between every single bounce here. And crank this way up. 
And this probably isn't what you're looking for, but I just wanna demonstrate the amount of power and the amount of customizability that you have with bounce mode here. So hang is one of the coolest features of this. What this does is it provides a way to increase the easing at the peaks of these different bounces. So if we go ahead and increase this hang, you can see that we have much more easing at the peaks of these different uh, bounces here. Hit apply here. And this is going to give you like a much more cartoony feel, very much like a Roadrunner type of animation or something. Super fun. Now let's go through and try to make the appropriate bounces for a bowling ball and also for a basketball. So let's start with the basketball here. I'm going to select the keyframes. Let's jack up the bounciness here, decrease the hang a little bit, decrease the decay Y a little bit, maybe the bounciness a little bit more. And then let's just hit apply. It's going to generate all of these new keyframes here and we get a basketball looking type of animation. I'm going to undo that, increase this a little bit. I want a little bit more decay Y. And I'm going to decrease the amplitude a little bit, maybe bring up the bounciness to 100%. And now you can see that we're getting like a crazy long bounce animation here. Maybe that's not what we're looking for. Let's increase the gravity a little bit, decrease the bounciness. So you can just see how quick it is to iterate on these different effects, dial in whatever you're looking for. You can iterate so quickly with this tool. Super fun, super easy. Now let's do the bowling ball. So for this, I'm going to select these keyframes, decrease the bounciness here, maybe increase the decay Y, let's go even less bounciness, increase the gravity a little bit, decrease the amplitude, and let's see what we get. Yeah, that looks like a bowling ball. I mean, it barely had any bounce, but it had a little bit here. And you can see that we're just getting like a couple of bounces in. So that's a super easy way and super simple way to create bounce animations inside of After Effects using Curves Bounce Mode. So many possibilities. You can create all different types of bounce animations very, very quickly. It's awesome. Just like in bounce mode, elastic mode provides us with a super easy to use customizable way of creating elastic animations inside of After Effects. So I've got this fun little jack in the box scene set up here and I'm just going to select my two keyframes and let's just apply the default curve in elastic mode. So just like that, elastic mode is going to generate these new keyframes in our timeline to make this beautiful looking elastic animation right off the bat. Just like with bounce mode, what we see in the UI is a one-to-one -one representation of what gets generated in After Effects. Let's go ahead and go through some of these different parameters that elastic mode provides us, many of which are very similar to the bounce mode. Just like in bounce mode, amplitude is going to control how high these various elastic overshoots reach. So if we go ahead and crank this down and let's just reapply here, and now, as you can see, we have a less dramatic type of overshoot elastic animation here. Duration is exactly the same as gravity inside of bounce mode. It provides us a way to decrease or increase the total amount of time that our elastic animation takes place. So if we want to have this more drawn out, we can go ahead, increase duration, and then let's just go ahead and hit apply. As you can see, now this animation is happening over a much longer period of time. In contrast to that, we can go ahead and decrease duration here, and we're going to get a much tighter, springier type of animation. Decay X provides us a way to incrementally decrease or increase the amount of time between the incremental overshoot animations here. So if I go ahead and increase Decay X, it is going to decrease the amount of time that happens between each incremental overshoot. So I'm gonna go ahead, increase decay X, let's increase duration a little bit here. And now as you can see, we have a lot of time between the first overshoot and then all of the following overshoots are getting tighter and tighter together. So go ahead, hit apply here. Great. Decay Y provides us a way to incrementally decrease or increase the amount of overshoot that is happening on every single elastic animation here. So if we go ahead and decrease DKY, as you can see, it's going to have a less of a decaying effect over the course of these various overshoots here. Hit apply. And as you can see, this is going to last a lot longer as an animation. But if we want to increase DKY, we're going to have an animation that dies off much sooner. As you can see, a lot less springy here. It's just going to end the animation much quicker because we are decaying 
more quickly. Just like in bounce mode, we have hang, and it's going to allow us to control the easing at the various peaks and valleys of these overshoot elastic animations here. So I'll go ahead, increase hang super high here. This is going to get us a very dramatic type of elastic animation going on here. Great. Now, another thing that I want to cover is how Curves is going to create these various bounce and elastic animations. So it looks at two different things. It looks at the incoming values of the property that we have keyframes selected, and it also looks at the duration of those keyframes. So if I have a much tighter initial type of keyframe set here, we're going to get a much tighter resulting type of animation. But if I go ahead and drag out these keyframes, and select them, hit apply again. As you can see, we're getting a much longer type of animation. A lot of this is being driven by the original duration of our selected keyframes. And this is what allows us to select any type of keyframe set with any type of duration and get a very predictable result. If we want to access our curve presets while in distribution or bounce mode, feel free to just jump over here and click on this arrow up button. This is going to reveal the presets bar and inside of here, there's a bunch of different ways that we can get access to presets. As you can see, we ship with a few different categories here. We have in curves, we have in out curves, and we also have out curves. Also, if we are using one of these curves quite a bit, we can favorite it, and it's gonna show up here in our favorites. If we want to add a new preset to our preset list, we can go ahead and click on this add preset button. This is going to allow us to create not only a new preset, but if we want to, we can create a new category as well. Cool. So inside of the preset selection here, if you drop this down, as you can see, I don't have any custom preset categories right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a new one here. Now let's go ahead and make the name, hit save. We just had that new preset added. And then if we scroll down here, you can see that we have that new preset category with our new custom preset. Now we can favorite this preset or since this is a custom preset, we can delete it as well. If we go ahead and expand this view up even more, we can now reorder the list of our category presets here. So if you have a bunch of different like client projects and they all have different easing methods, you can simply sort them using this method. If we go ahead and delete a custom preset, if it's the last custom preset in that preset category, it's going to delete the category as well. We'll bring this back down if we just click on one of these presets, it's going to load it up inside of the user interface here. But if we hold shift while we are clicking on it, it is going to automatically apply that selected curve to our selected keyframes. Now, if we expand up this view and we just click on these different presets, uh, you don't have to hold shift anymore. It's just going to automatically apply them to your different keyframe sets. As you can see, curves can do a lot. It makes it super easy to apply easing to keyframes, distribute layers and keys, create bounce animations, and create elastic animations. Our goal was to create the last easing tool that you will ever need, and by golly, I think that we're there. Curves is available exclusively through Plug and Play. Plug and Play is our new subscription After Effects tool platform that gets you all access to our growing catalog of After Effects tools, assets, and resources. Come on over and check out our current premium catalog, plus all the awesome great products that we're developing and shipping in the coming months. But let us know if there's any features or different products that you'd like to see created. That's the thing about Plug and Play, we're constantly shipping new features, constantly adding new products, and we can't wait to share more with you. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Danny with Plug and Play.